Hello, my name is Akra Asli. I'm a board-certified fellowship trained orthopedic spine surgeon, and I'm in private practice here in the Sacramento area. However, I'm very active with research and development. I've been in practice since 2002, so the last 15 years, and I go to the conferences at least twice a year. So far, I've never heard somebody talk about specific failure of pedicle screw, where they fail, what's the primary fixation. Uh, they talk about combination of pull out and toggle and just kind of overall how they fail, but not getting to the specifics of which one is the first bone that fails. Uh, I read papers about uh, the purchase of the pedicle screw and they've argued is the vertebral body, the pedicle itself, or more proximal. Um, to understand that, we need to start from the basics. The most important force that acts on body is gravity, and it goes only one way. Uh, motion of spine is in three dimensions, so it could be flexion, extension, lateral bending, or torsional kind of motion. But how often do you catch yourself extended? Not very often. It's a very unstable position. How often do you catch yourself bend? Not very often. But you're constantly in flexion. Everything we do is in flexion. Everything we're working, riding, or doing is in flexion. Even when you start walking, you have a slight flexion. You don't walk straight unless you're in the marching band. Because flexion is just a much more stable posture. Even when you see fighters square up, they're always in flexion. So let's see what happens to the spine in flexion. This is a model that I've hand-drawn. It's a multi-level fusion. I've used different companies for a 3D explanation and, and spent a lot of money and really it didn't uh, convey what I wanted to. So I had to go back to hand drawing. So hopefully I can convey uh, what I think about the spine. As you can see here, this is a four level construct. So let's see first what happens on top vertebrae in the top screw because that's where most of the failure comes in. Same thing happens in the lower but let's focus on top. Well, the, this pedicle screw is going to immobilize, want to immobilize this vertebrae right here. And what are the forces that act on this vertebrae in flexion? Well, it's the vertebrae above. It wants to pull it, and not only that, it wants to rotate it. The motion of this vertebrae is a rotational motion for two reasons. One, that's the only uh, motion that the facet joint is going to allow you to do. And of course, the motion comes because of the disc that's not going to slide back and forth. The axis of rotation on the average, again, it goes front and the back, but on the average is somewhere in the middle. So if you go in the middle, you know, it's averages out, it's pretty a good uh, estimation of where that axis is. So in this illustration, you can see that the axis of rotation is in the middle of the disc space. That means, if you think about it like a record spinning, this whole vertebrae, if you go further away from the axis, the motion increases and the force, I'm sorry, motion uh, increases and the force decreases. That means if you go further, it takes a lot less force to stop it. Imagine a door that's jammed. If you want to open it, you don't push it in the middle. You go to the corner, you go to the, to the far end, because that's where the, the force is the, is the, you can apply the biggest force. The same thing happens right here. When you, when you go, the furthest point to the axle rotation is a point of screw insertion. And of course, the most important part is the inferior rim of where it's inferior, because the vertebra wants to flex. And as you go along the screw, the distance to the, to the axis gets decreased. That means the motion is increased, but the force is increased. That means the primary fixation for a pedicle screw is the rim of bone, inferior rim of bone, at site of insertion. For two reasons this is important. One is the only cortical bone. After this you got nothing but cancellous bone. And two is the farthest point from the axis. Once that bone fails, there's nothing to stop it because it opens like a zipper because as you go down the, down the screw, the force gets increased and there's, you can't stop it. So not only you don't have a good bone, but actually the force increases. So as you can see, that's it. Your fixation is the rim of bone. And not only that, it has to stop and then toggle. Uh, I reviewed some dental paperwork, I mean dental literature. When they had the uh, implants, they had a high rate of implants in the primary implantation, and they thought that it was the compression. 
Well, after further research, they found out that actually these implants fail in toggle, and the bone, which they call a crest, the, the bone around the implant, is very intolerant to toggle forces. So what they do right now, they put an implant, they wait a few weeks for the bone to grow, and then they put the cap on. That's something that we cannot do in spine surgery. There are many papers point to the fact, the importance of the bone at the site of insertion. One of the biggest evidence is the existence of what we call cortical screw in the lumbar spine. Cortical screw is more medial, has a weird trajectory, goes lateral and superior. It's shorter, thinner, and has this weird trajectory that doesn't take anything in the, in the pedicle or so. But it works really well. Why? Because with that medialization, it gets that cortical bone, a strong cortical bone at the site of insertion. But of course, uh, cortical screw has its own set of problems that we're not going to talk about it this way right today. Now, let's talk about literature. I looked at the literature and I came across six prospective randomized study that looked at the instrumentation, pedicle screw, looked at the fusion rate and outcome with and without instrumentation, the pedicle screw. And I'm going to show it to you. This one is by France. Next one is by Jaeger. The third one is published in Spine by Christensen in 2002. Next one is by Korsgaard in Journal of Spinal Disorder. The one after that is a 1997 Volvo Award winner by Thompson. It's been quoted, this paper has been quoted quite a bit, 1997 Volvo Award winner. And of course, the last one, Fritzel. And this was published in Spine as well. So, all these six papers, they all said the same thing. All six of them showed that the addition of the instrumentation did not improve outcome. Four of them said that it did not increase fusion rate. One of them, fusion rate went up just a little bit, I think 10%. Another one, the sixth one, actually, fusion rate went down. So two things right here. Why is that? These papers in the late uh, 1990s and early 2000s came out and they said basically the pedicle screw doesn't do what it's supposed to do. However, the use of pedicle screw actually went through the roof and became actually an integral part of spine surgery, a routine usage. Why? Here's the explanation. When the surgeon putting that screw in, and I do this all the time, I'm still putting pedicle screws in. When the surgeon put that screw in, as the more thread gets engaged with the bone, the insertional torque increases. Therefore, the, the surgeon gets the perception of a great fixation. I talk to my friends quite a bit and they tell me, oh, we get a great fixation. So that, that's one thing. The surgeon feels this gets a great fixation. However, inside the patient, that screw has to stop toggle, not pull out, not going up and down, but toggle. So it fails in a totally different plane. It gives the surgeon a false perception of a great fixation. The second thing is like we look at scoliosis and it does a good job in terms of correcting scoliosis. However, it fails on top and the bottom. And most of the people that we do scoliosis will look at them having uh, good bone. So it holds the curve really well because it distributes the force. But on top and the bottom, it creates problems like PJK. And in the bottom, we have to go to the ilium to have at least a decent fixation. The other problem that is inherent to pedicle screw that nobody talks about, but is extremely important, and I didn't recognize it till I started working on spine within the last two, three years, is what we call, what I call, uh, Wolverine phenomena. And that's how it goes. When you put these screws in, freehand, there's absolutely no way that you can put the head of the screw all in one nice straight line. They're going to be up and down, different angulation, uh, and, and different up and down. Now, what does the tulip do? It does not determine the final resting position of the rod. All it does, it helps in capturing the rod. Once the rod comes in and you feel like you're, you're decently in there, you start putting the cap on, tighten it. Now, have you ever put, tried to close a pedicle screw? First, you put the uh, 
cap on the lock knot. First, you feel it, you know, no resistance. It goes in the first few threads. Then it touches the rod and you start feeling this light resistance. And then once the rod seats at the bottom, then you hear the squeaking noise of titanium together. Well, for the, all my life, all my uh, professional life in, as a spine surgeon, I never knew what that light resistance is. I know now. You know what that is? That's basically the tulip kicking the screw in a certain direction that it has to kick. Why? Because if you look at the tulip right here, it has a circular motion. That means if you bend it to one plane, it loses motion on the other plane. And if it bends all the way to one side, it's pretty much locked. Therefore, by definition, the pedicle screw system is under constant stress. And that's there even if you use uh, new systems that's coming out that actually bends the rod for you. Uh, there are systems that you um, have a had, had a had a little thing that you put it on the rod and the computer sees where that thing is and it bends for you. So those are very great systems. But even that, that doesn't eliminate it. That means you put the screws in as soon as just by connecting them with the rod, the screws start fighting each other. And I estimate based on quality of the bone, you can lose somewhere around 40% of your fixation and you don't even know about it. The patient's not even in the recovery room. Therefore, I truly believe that we as surgeons, we always complain. Well, we don't have the answers because spine patients are so diverse. And that's true. However, we have introduced a good part of that diversity ourselves with using pedicle screws. Why? The way I explain it is that you can make the screw as strong as it can hold this building. But if you put it into weak bone, you got no fixation. We have no clue about a bone that we put these screws in. When you put your pedicle screws and lock them together, you have no idea what your fixation is. And your fixation could be anything close to zero all the way to a rigid fixation. And we just simply don't know. And when the papers come back, and the paper tells us that this stuff doesn't work, we just brush it off. Why do I have to talk about this? Why do I have to bring this up? Because every time I talk to new surgeons, let's say surgeons that have been in practice, young surgeons that have been in practice for about five, six years, they think I'm crazy. They think like, we showed a long time ago that the pedicle screws increase fusion rate. We never did. Somehow, I believe, somebody dreamt about it and started talking about a lecture that we have a lot of evidence that the pedicle screw increased fusion rate. We don't. It doesn't exist. There are papers that shows that the fusion rate goes up with instrumentation if you have instability, like a, like a spondylolisthesis. But according to the literature, and it's the collective literature, the pedicle screw is able to bring the stability up to the level of a spine with intact facet joints. Beyond that, it doesn't work very well. And that makes sense. You cannot ask a screw to immobilize in every dimension. We know the pedicle screw or, or a screw is, a, is not a good device for toggle. And it turns out bone is not a good material to stop toggle. So you put that together and the research that's coming out, it, this came out in late 1990s and early 2000s, we just blew by it. And somehow we made ourselves believe that this stuff works. We almost like live in matrix. We think that we're doing a great fixation for the patient. Well, when they come back and they're not happy and then the outcome is not good, we tell them, oh, there's something wrong with you or you, you probably have a second, uh, secondary gain or so. While our papers telling us that our stuff, our research tells us that our systems don't work. Anyways, my only goal of this video is that for you to start thinking. I'm not saying agree with me. This is a very controversial uh, topic. But at least start thinking. This pedicle screw has, ingrained, has become ingrained in our brain so deep that just criticizing pedicle screw, people get offended. I don't know why. Unfortunately, if you're not going to believe research, why do research at all? I hope at least I start making you think about this a little bit. That's all I want. Have a nice day.